Welcome to Talent Unavailable, Unavailable Analysis. Yay! So we begin the episode with uh, Rick speaking in a simulation, or some sort of brain machine, to an alien Nathan Fillion. I know it sounds weird, but it's an a alien version of Nathan Fillion. Uh, it appears that Rick is fully aware, since he tells Jerry to bend himself into 12 different... Six. Hmm? Six. Six different... Really? No, 12. No, six. Oh, no, 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 12. 12. He t tells himself to, to, to turn himself into 12, fold himself 12 times, sorry. He tells himself to fold himself 12 times, so from that point on, we know Rick is fully aware, he's obviously a genius, but he's fully aware that he is in some sort of simulation. He manipulates the simulation so that the alien who's trying to get the information out of him is now his hostage. Now, from that point, it gets a bit weird. Very, very weird. Uh, we already know it's a continuation of the Cronenberg, Morty, uh, and Cronenberg, Rick, uh, episode, where they are very... They make a disease, I guess, for Morty. He loves Jessica, and uh, and Jessica, and a lot of other people end up falling in love with Morty because of this disease. I love Morty, and Morty loves me, and uh, the, the whole world, his universe gets destroyed. You know, or that world, the Cronenberg world, got destroyed. Okay, I hope everyone's following me at this point. Now, Rick returns to Rick and Morty return to the new world of the new family, since their old family is in the Cronenberg universe, as we see in the episode, and we see that uh, Morty tells Summer to find <laughs> the dead Rick in the backyard, meaning that's her Rick, and your, the C-137 Rick, which is technically the smartest Rick, is a complete dick. And he, and Morty says he doesn't give a crap about them, or whatever it is that, you know, uh, you should care about in general with a normal type family. C-137 Rick manipulates um, the, uh, the brain the brain device, the C-9000 or whatever the hell Brain Elizer. Brain Elizer 9000, which he, Nathan Fillion tells it, or he tells Nathan Fillion, oh, you're gonna, you know, even splurge for a, a better device to, you know, record my thoughts. And Nathan Fillion alien lets him know that, no, we, you know, the, the people in charge didn't want to splurge. So, so Rick is able to min manipulate it, um, change the rules of the game, put him, his own consciousness inside the alien, and then he, from there, transfers his consciousness to a much different Ricks, since it's a council of Ricks, and there's a ton of Ricks, as if anyone who watches the show knows. So he transfers to a bunch of uh, different Ricks, and, uh, and what happens is, uh, the alien is gone a while ago, but after he kills the alien, he says, Oh, I, I shouldn't have killed him before I got to try good alien dick, or some, some, some weird thing weird like that. I didn't get to give that insect dick a test drive. Wait, wait, wait! It's, it's all a part of the humor. So, so that happens. Uh, he meets up with uh, C-137 Morty, and, and Morty knows. Morty was standing, C-137 Morty, was standing in front of the Council of the Ricks, and he tells the Council of the Ricks, he, my, my Rick, he's coming for you! He, he knows. He knows that Rick is going to come for them, and they also are afraid, because they know C-137 Rick is the most powerful of all the Ricks. Yeah, he even put a nice little note on Morty's gun that says, Not a real gun. Shoot me in case of uh, uh, a, a standoff. Yeah, sh thank you. Sh shoot me in case of a standoff, because it's fake, obviously. Um, and and in, in we see they, that when they captured, he was with Summer, but it wasn't C-137 Summer. Because C-137 Summer, according to the other episode, is back in the Cronenberg world in a post-apocalyptic... Uh, Flintstones type nightmare thing where she she and her parents don't have you know they're living a primitive lifestyle eating Cronenberg meat I saw roasted flesh of Cronenberg so uh, they, they they have a different summer and, and he goes go ahead shoot her she's not even my summer and they and the other Ricks, Ricks know this and Morty feels terrible about it so that's why he shoots Rick even though he was supposed to basically uh, you know shoot uh, you know uh, summer um, he didn't give he didn't give a crap. I mean, he was supposed. I mean, he, sorry, he was supposed to shoot Rick because it was all st standoff type of deal, and uh, just to fool the other Rick into believing that uh, that uh, uh, indeed um, uh, the 
the Rick C-137 Rick doesn't give a crap about this summer because his summer is somewhere else. Um, so, so that was, that was the first thing. Now, uh, that was basically the whole episode. Once they, they finish the standoff business, take the portal gun, go back to their, their surrogate, um, Jerry, Beth, and, uh, Summer family, which Summer was already with them, because that's who C-137, uh, Rick and Morty are living with. They're not, no longer with their original family, because their original family became uh, primitive type people on Cronenberg planet. Uh, so, uh, at that point, uh, everyone kind of splits up. Rick's somehow plants the idea in Beth's head that he should get a divorce, or she should, sorry, she should divorce Jerry. Uh, and Jerry, you know, Jerry. So he does, he does this thing, his magic, what he does with Beth. And then, and so she ends up talking to Jerry about divorce. The coolest thing is, they took it all the way back to season one. My favorite part of season one was end of season one, where you and me, Marty, we're going to do adventures, and then Morty's sitting there frothing from his mouth. Oh, he's like frothing from his mouth. Because Rick gave him, uh, I think he gave him the seeds of whatever it was up his butt yeah. or something. So he he had, uh, he, he says, it's gonna, even though you're super smart now, in about five seconds you're going to be paralyzed. And five seconds later, Morty was paralyzed, and he has to listen to Rick frothing in his mouth and telling him, you're going to do adventures with me, Morty. And it's going to be wonderful. And, and, uh, 100 years, 100 seasons of Rick and Morty. So they brought it all the way back to here. Uh, the weird part was, though, he kept mentioning, and this is something I really like, he kept mentioning, I mean, I, I've had, I, I, I don't want to say where I live now, but there's a lot of foods I miss where I come from in California, I, and I, I, the only place I can actually taste those foods are in my imagination. Rick explained the whole episode, there was some kind of Mulan Szechuan sauce for di uh, dipping nuggets in that they had for a limited time at McDonald's, and he remembers the flavor, but since they no longer have it on the market, and they can't, you can't get it at McDonald's anymore, the only place he can actually remember it and enjoy it is in his mind. And so, so he actually, I mean, this is something I would do. I'm not a Rick, but I, I'm more like a Morty. But he would take, uh, he would take, all, he said it takes all the episodes. He goes, it will take, uh, I think he said, 97 years. <laughs> 97 years and 9 seasons, but he said at the end of the 9 seasons, I will find that Mulan Szechuan sauce. So, so the whole thing, instead of, it was a total April Fool's mock of season 1. He took the whole thing and just turned it into every single season Morty. Instead of every single season Morty is for us to get knowledge or whatever, move forward in the universe, find portal guns, etc. like first season. No. He says, we're going to find, he has a specific mission, by the end of season 9, we are going to find this Mulan Szechuan sauce. Uh, and I have to say to the writers, my hat goes off to you. Really well done. Uh, I, I really feel that this Mulan Szechuan uh, dipping sauce, teriyaki dipping sauce is what he said. He said teriyaki dipping sauce uh, is, is something that, is, it's, it's so yummy. Like the, the descriptions just, I mean, you can, it, there's so many foods, maybe a burrito, maybe pizza. Maybe some sort of Szechuan sauce. I don't know. But we all have that special food we love. Um, and if you can't get it anymore, again, you feel like me, who you don't have access to that food, and the only place you can actually see it in the meantime or feel it in the meantime is in your imagination. I do believe Rick, after season 9, will find the Szechuan sauce because uh, unlike myself, he is Rick and he makes magic. Um, but he's definitely going to be taking Morty along for the whole ride. The episode ends with uh, an old favorite, Rick's best friend, Bird Person, who is now um, Phoenix Bird, or Phoenix Person. Uh, that's, right? that's Phoenix or something. Yeah, yeah, they called him uh, Phoenix Person. And um, uh, the girl, I don't remember, it's this Bird Person's fiance, who's Summer's friend, I really forget her name. Um, she said she wanted to call him Cyberbird. And the people creating him said, you told us it doesn't matter what his name is as long as he works. And so she goes, fine, Phoenix Bird, Phoenix Bird is acceptable. And she rides off on this new bird person, Phoenix Bird, who's like half, you know, himself. So, but, but again, the, the Morty, uh, the Rick frothing at the mouth at the end, and Szechuan, Mulan Szechuan sauce was just such a good touch. Uh, Rick, uh, <coughs> Morty, with the Mulan Szechuan sauce, um, perfect ending. Uh, it was worth the wait, and uh, I, I really apologize that burp wasn't Rick worthy, but uh, it, it, it was great. And uh, I think that everyone, thank you for watching my show. Thank you for uh, being patient for Rick and Morty. It was worth it.
talent unavailable, subscribe. Ooh, that's a bingo!